being a beginner and getting the cello into position, learning where all the points of contact are and just feeling comfortable holding the cello can be really frustrating in the beginning. And it's really easy to think that, you know, it should it should just be quick, right? This is just like the, the visual, physical part of playing the cello and should, we should just be able to hold it and get it there and then it's done and we move on. But it's that is not the case. And I wish there was some one size uh, fits all or some magic wand I could wave and just instantly you would know how to hold the cello and be able to get it in position quickly. But it just takes time, it just takes practice. And I wanna assure you that it does get better um, the more you practice it and just the more you get used to getting it in position. And something, something it will, if there is anything magical, it's that over time you just get better at doing it, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna give you some uh, points here, some best practices to keep in mind so that you can get there a little easier and a little sooner. There is a visual quick reference guide to go with this video linked down in the description. So if you do want to follow along that way, you can go ahead and uh, get that and have that pulled up while you're watching the video. All right, so the number one thing that I always recommend to beginners, well, to all students who are learning, because I used this all the way through my undergraduate years in college, which is practicing in front of a mirror. You know, when I'm looking at the mirror, just like I'm looking at you right now, I'm sitting up straight. I can see everything that's over here. I can see what my bow hand is doing. When I turn to look like this, you see what happens to my shoulder. You see what happens to my posture. Everything gets destroyed, right? Because I'm looking, I'm trying to look at my fingers. I'm trying to look at where my bow is contacting, or I'm trying to look over this way or, or whatever. And as soon as I come back, because I'm a beginner and I don't know how to just find this position, it's all wrecked and it's all messed up. So, so that you don't have to look this way, okay, or look this way or twist around, having that mirror in front of you is so important, okay? And it doesn't have to be a fancy mirror. It can be, um, you know, it could be a skinny one. Of course, a full body mirror is always better. That was always my favorite to practice in front of, but you just need something to see. It could even be a device like an iPad or a Chromebook. Um, phone screens a little small but I do have a video here on the channel all about practicing with a phone and so you can use a phone uh, and it will still help you if that's all you have access to and you don't have access to a mirror where you are practicing okay so use the mirror so that you can stay sitting up straight and see everything that you need to see now depending on whether you're watching this for yourself or watching it for your student uh, if you're watching this because you're helping uh, your small child you know, just in general, wiggling around too much can mess up posture and position, right? And so depending on if we're just in general moving around, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, wiggling because we're immature or because we're a child. You know, if I reach over to move the book, move the page, or reach over to get this, or reach over to get that, any kind of movement when I'm first starting out is going to get me out of whack, right? And so what happens is we don't want to take the time to go through our checklist, you know, knee, knee, chest, you know, where is the instrument hitting me? Where is it supposed to be hitting me? And anytime I move, okay, or, or, or go to reach for this or do that or, or anything that I'm doing, you know, am I going through my checklist, okay, giving the cello a hug when I come back to make sure I'm always starting in the, the correct place here when I'm, when I'm sitting down to play. Slouching, yes, sitting like this, okay. Uh, remember any kind of, any kind of, I got to sit up straight. You know, it just <laughs> goes without saying, got to sit up straight. Otherwise it's going to be impossible to hold this cello in the correct position. Now, if you do just have your, your phone or an iPad or something like this, and you feel like the screen is too small, what I would suggest, and I suggest this anyway, is record yourself. Okay. Record yourself often. It's never a bad thing. It always helps. It's always great. And you know, sometimes the, the, the phone screen is a little too small while we're playing, but if we record ourselves and just watch it back and we focus in on just observing ourselves playing, then we can see a lot of things that are happening with the posture. And plus you can, you know, you can move the phone around, record yourself from the side to see if you are slouching, uh, to see how this peg is hitting you. So you know, record yourself, watch it back. Now, lastly is the number one, maybe most complicated uh, something of getting the cello into position. And that is that we have two things at play here. We have the end pin length and we have the angle. And what can be frustrating, and I think why we just gradually get better at getting into position and knowing what this is supposed to feel like, is that we get better at knowing which one we need. Do we need to change the angle? Okay. 
uh, or do we need to change the end pin length? Okay, and I'm going to help you here uh, know which one to do. Okay, so all right, so if I'm having a really difficult time getting this cello in position, for example, it's just way too high, right? It just seems like no matter what I do, whether I angle it this way or angle it this way, okay, that this cello is way above my knees, okay, and I'm not able to get it in the right position. It just always feels like it's too high. Then I definitely have the end pin too long. So as you can see, when it's out way too long, if I go like this, even if I get it down where it's hitting me in the chest correctly and the pegs are behind me, it's way above my knees. Okay, I I'm, I'm, can't even grab anything. Okay, here with, with my knees. Right? Cello is definitely not in the right position and there's no way it's going into the right position. So let's do the opposite now. If it's too short, okay, then either my peg or maybe I'm getting uh, the instrument in the right position, right? I got no end pin on the floor, all right? But, main, but if it's too short, my knees are probably gonna be in the bouts no matter what. Okay, all right, so if I go up like this, well, then the peg's hitting me, right? And my knees, as you can see, are still here in the bouts, okay, because the end pin is too short. And I'm showing you the extreme ends here uh, of what can happen. But no matter what, as you can see, okay, my knees are here. My knees should be, let me show you that there. My knees should be here, right? Hugging this part of the instrument here, right? Should be here, not way down here like this. And so this is what I would tell you, always start with the angle, okay? Get this cello in position with it hitting, you know, your solar plexus here, your sternum, all right? Getting the cello in the right place on your chest, making sure that the pegs are behind your neck, okay? And then seeing where the end pin needs to go um, you know, and if you've got two hands here or four hands, I mean two people, you could actually hold the cello like this and just let the end pin out and see where it goes. Um, and then mark it from there. It might be a good way to do it. Okay. Um, but make sure you start here with the angle first so that you can then see where the cello is supposed to be and let the end pin out from there and adjust accordingly. So you should be able to, you know, you, you know that you have the right angle and the right end pin length when you have all of these three points of contact correct with my knees here hugging the right part of the cello okay pegs behind me right i'm able to get to everything easily excuse me there all right and uh then i know i'm in the right position okay so i hope that helps uh leave me a comment down below uh, if you have any more questions about this i'm also going to link up if you need the full tutorial um, walkthrough of cello size and position. I have a video all about that on the channel and you can watch it right here.